So in this problem we've got a mass that's being suspended by a vertical jet of water and we need to figure out uh, the volumetric flow rate of the water needed to support the mass. So we're going to graph, uh, let's see, we're going to graph Q as a function of the mass. So the idea is that the higher the mass, the uh, bigger the volumetric flow rate of the water splashing on the base of this disk. We know the height of the platform above the free jet. We know the diameter of it and what we're looking for is Q, the volumetric flow rate, for a given value of M. One thing to pay attention to is the fact that the water uh, becomes larger as you move higher up into the stream. And this is because as the water moves upward it gains potential energy or I should say it gains potential energy at the expense of its kinetic energy. So if we drew two points, uh, we could call it point one and uh, maybe point two up here, we could calculate the velocity at point two just by using Bernoulli's equation. And note that the pressure is atmospheric pressure both at one and two. All the fluid's energy at point one is just one half rho v1 squared, and that's equal to one half rho v2 squared plus rho gh. Note that I've exaggerated the width of this jet as it moves out. So it looks like the fluid is moving up and to the right, but in reality it's basically uh, straight up for most of it. This is, a, I've exaggerated up here just to emphasize the point. So if we were to write a velocity vector, we'd have u in the i-hat direction, so I could call this the x-axis, I could call this or I could call this end of the screen the y-axis, and then vertically would be our z-axis. So my velocity vector u in the i-hat, v in the j-hat or y-direction, plus w in the k-hat direction. And because the water is only moving uh, basically straight up, there's no component in the u or the v-direction. So we'll just note that the velocity vector is only, is only uh, acting straight up, uh, for our purposes in the jet. So this means the average velocity at 1 and the average velocity at 2 we could replace with w1 and w2. So let's save these equations and we'll put them up here. In this problem another thing to consider I'm going to draw a control volume. Remember we can draw a control volume any way we want but let's make it uh, as easy as possible. I'm going to draw lines that are perpendicular to the flow direction at the top and this is a circular disk, so we don't see the z direction here, but I'm just going to take the control volume and cut it perpendicular to the flow at the base of it as well. And at the front of it, this disk shape would come out around. So if we were to draw unit normals, the unit normals would come out everywhere perpendicular to the control volume. So that goes to the right on the right side, to the left on the other side. There's also unit normals coming out at us into the screen on, on the back side of it. So let's consider the y, the rate at which the z component or the vertical component of momentum enters the control volume and the rate at which it leaves the control volume. So I've got vertical momentum, positive z momentum entering the control volume but I don't have any z momentum leaving the control volume. It's all in the x or the y direction as it splashes off the base of this plate. So something, we could say something had to destroy the z component of momentum in the control volume. So we're looking for external forces acting on our control volume itself. And the only external force we have here would be the mass, uh, the weight of the block acting in the downward direction. And that force, of course, would be mass times gravity. Another interesting tidbit is that there is no x or y component of momentum entering the control volume either, simply because the velocity is only in the vertical direction. However, we've got x component of momentum leaving the right side, and we've got x component of momentum leaving the left side, but there are no external forces acting in the x direction. The only external force is mg acting in the negative z direction. So that means that the rate at which the vertical component of momentum enters the control volume has to equal the rate at which it leaves. And since no vertical momentum enters the, or since no horizontal momentum enters the control volume, it has to be such that the 
momentum acting to the right leaving the control volume here has to be equal and opposite to the momentum leaving the left side of the control volume. So we in essence have no horizontal momentum entering and uh, we have no net horizontal momentum leaving the control volume be simply because there are no external forces in those directions. So let's use Reynolds transport theorem as it pertains to linear momentum. And here I've just written the z component of it because that's all we're interested in. The x and the y directions won't give us any new information. So we need to figure out the sum of all of the z forces acting on our control volume. And the only one here is the uh, mass times gravity acting in the downward direction. Now I, I guess I should point out that the weight of the water itself within the control volume is an external force, but we're going to say that the volume of the water here in the highlighted region is so small that uh, we'll neglect the weight of that water compared to the weight on top of the platform. And as we work with this equation, the first term on the right hand side is the net rate of change of momentum within the control volume itself. And because the problem's at steady state, the uh, momentum inside the control volume uh, doesn't change with respect to time, so we get to uh, conveniently set that one to zero. So now we need to somehow evaluate the second term on the right-hand side, and we need to evaluate an area integral of w rho v dot n dA. So let's break it into three parts. The first part of our area is going to be this region right here where the water enters the base of it. And the second part of our area is going to be where the water exits the control volume at the top of it. The third part of our area is going to be every, everywhere except the first two. So it's going to be all this curve, this angled uh, region here. Now recall that the velocity everywhere on the surface of it forms a right angle to the unit normal. So it turns out that V dot N at that third area is equal to zero everywhere. So we don't have to even include it because that section of the control surface, the integral is going to be zero. So let's deal with this region here where the fluid is exiting. And I should note it's a three-dimensional problem. The fluid exits to the left, it exits to the right. It also exits at us and it exits away from us as it splashes off the round platform. V dot n here, uh, the velocity and the unit normal vectors are in the same direction. So if we were to evaluate V dot n in these regions, we would find uh, a positive quantity. So you might think that this uh, region here, the integral, would be non-zero because v dot n is positive. However, the vertical component, or the, I'm sorry, the x component and the y component of velocity are both zero in those regions. However, the vertical component of momentum, the velocity here, only moves in the x direction and in the y direction. There is no z component to the velocity as it exits. So the w component of the velocity there is equal to zero in that region. So even though v dot n is not zero in the highlighted region, w is. So the integral of w rho v dot n in that region is equal to zero. The only place that it's not zero is in that region right there. I've exaggerated the height of it. Let's put point two uh, right down here just so we can use Bernoulli's equation to find the velocity entering the control volume. So let's see. So a negative mg, sum of forces in the z direction, is going to be equal to the area integral of the control surface where everything is non-zero. So we're just going to do uh, this area right here, the highlighted region. So w will be equal to w2 times rho. And in this region, v dot n, v is just equal, well, we'll just write v dot n is equal to the magnitude of the velocity at that location times the magnitude of the normal vector at that location times the cosine of the angle between the two vectors. And that angle is going to be 180 degrees. By definition, the unit normal, the magnitude of it, is equal to 1. And the magnitude of our velocity at that region is just equal to w. So simplifying this, I've got w times 1 times the cosine of 180 is just equal to negative 1. So v dot n in that region is just equal to negative w. And if we're evaluating it at point 2, this is equal to w2, the velocity right there. So we've got w2 times rho times w2 v dot n times negative 1 dA. So if we simplify this integral, w2 rho w2 
uh, times negative 1 is all uniform across the highlighted region. So we get to pull that out of the area integral. The integral here is just uh, the area itself. So let's simplify this. So we've got negative w2 times rho times the area at region 2. So I'm talking about the whole highlighted region. And that looks like a circular shape where the fluid flows into it. And then we've got one more w2 over here. And we don't know what area 2 is. We don't exactly know what the area of the highlighted region is. But what's interesting about this is we don't actually need it. Because we've got w2 times a2 is just equal to q. Q times the density is just equal to the mass flow rate. So as it turns out, I could write this as simply m dot, the mass flow rate of the water, times w2. So on the left-hand side, we've got negative m g equals m dot times w2, or simplifying it, we could uh, eliminate the negative signs. So mg has dimensions of newtons, of course, and m dot has dimensions of kilograms per second, and w2 has dimensions of meters per second. So we look at it, kilogram meters per second squared is equal to a newton, so thankfully we are dimensionally consistent uh, in that equation. Alternatively, if we wanted to, we could just say mg is equal to uh, the density times q times w2. So it's interesting that such a complicated looking equation simplifies to something that looks relatively straightforward. So I'm going to put this up here just to save it for later and we'll delete that equation. So somehow we need to figure out how many unknowns we've got. We want to graph q as a function of m. So if I was going to plot this, let's say I knew a value of m, it would give me a value of q. So let's say that we know the density of water and see we know gravity of course h I gave you in the problem statement and we know the mass some given value of the mass times gravity and what we need to find right now we've got two equations right now and we've got one unknown w1 we've got another unknown w2 and let's see what else we go here's w2 again and m dot is a third unknown so right now we've established one two equations, but we have three unknowns. So we have to come up with a few more equations. Well, an, a, an easy equation might be that uh, Q down at this region, uh, where the volumetric flow rate is equal to W1 times the area of the jet itself, which is pi over 4, uh, the diameter, times the diameter squared. So let's see, I just introduced a new variable. Here's the fourth unknown is Q. Uh, w1 is the first unknown that we've marked here, and the diameter is provided for us. So we've got, now we've got three equations and four unknowns. So I'm studying this right now to try to come up with uh, what exactly is the fourth equation that we need. No, oh, I think it. I think it really is a simple. I think it's this equation. The volumetric flow rate is, or I'm sorry, the mass flow rate is equal to the volumetric flow rate times the density of the fluid. So I think that gives us. Let's see. M dot I've labeled as unknown number three. Q I've labeled as unknown number four, and the density is just the density of water. So this should give me four equations and four unknowns, and I should be able to plot, you know, whatever this expression might look like Q is a function of M. Note that I don't know what the actual curve looks like, but I'm assuming the heavier this brick, the uh, faster or the more water I need to splash on the base of this platform to keep it to keep it from falling down onto the jet. So I kind of I'm guessing before I even graph it it's going to be some sort of increasing shape. I don't know if it's going to look concave up or concave down. Um, I don't really even know if the intercept ought to be at zero. If the mass was zero, you, we might assume that the volumetric flow rate would be zero, but, but also remember that the water slows down between point 0.1 and point 0.2, so it, it might well not intercept at zero. So I'll leave it up to you to graph it for this problem.